that's never failing Let mercy fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a Savior The hope of nations Good morning. Welcome to Broadway United Methodist Church this morning. I am not Alexis or Mark. I'm Shannon. I will be your guest preacher this morning, our guest speaker this morning. Alexis and Mark and family are on vacation for a much needed, well deserved vacation. So they will be gone this week and next week. But thank you for being here. Um, as far as announcements go, I think the only one I know I saw some of our people looking are that we have the bracelets out in the front uh, Centrex area. You can choose if you want to be green for handshakes and hugs, yellow for, I think it's elbows only, and then red is just please continue to keep your distance. So we have those. Feel free to pick those up and, and wear those when you come in from now on because as it has been, things are ever changing with COVID, right? So we thank, thank you for wearing those. Thank you for understanding that. Uh, will you pray with me, please? Dear God, we come to you today just thankful, God, thankful for this place to be here, thankful that we can be here and worship together, God. Help us as we go through this service that you open our hearts and our minds to hear your word, God. Just protect us and keep us safe and help us be open to your word that we may do and hear what you would have us hear. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And now will you stand for our opening song, All of Creation. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Praise Brand Gray. Let's give them a hand. They do a great job. You may be seated. Will Carrie and any young disciples please come up for our children's time? I'll come up if that's okay. Or down? I guess I'm coming down. Come on down. I get to be a kid at both like services. Price is right. Do you have prizes? Do I get to guess? I don't want to guess. That's all I don't I have work. a new car for you. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm good. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we, we got go. one kid coming up. One brave soul. Oh, we got another one. Two brave souls and a giraffe. Hi. How are you? Come on in. Come on in. <gasps> and Come on three. over. Come on up. Here we go. Ooh. We are multiplying Woo-hoo. rapidly. Hi, guys. You can sit where... Ooh, you have Rubik's Cube. That might be fun. That might be more fun than the dominoes. How's it I'm going? I'm just saying. Good. Awesome. <clears throat> so, big kid. I'm going to hand you those. That's I don't me. know if we're going to use them, but hold that, hold that thought. So... Psst, psst. Hey, can we pay attention for just a second here? You, I know you already went through the first service with us, but we were going to talk about kindness because I know that you're going back to school pretty soon, right? Yep. Not. I'm sure the parents are like, yay, and the kids are like, boo. But um, we were going to talk about kindness today um, because I think that's a good topic as you head back to school. What do you think? Is that okay? Okay. So I found these really cool coins that I am going to give you, and I'll probably give them to you downstairs if you come down for Sunday school here. 
Um, and they are little coins, and they have all these cool sayings on them. Like this one says, I think I need to update my glasses here. Um, Thank you for your kindness. You took the time to show you care. So I'm going to give you a couple of these that you can share with your friends at school, kind of like paying it forward. Does that sound like a good idea? Can you guys do that? And then maybe you can report back after you start school and let me know how that goes. Can you do that? Awesome. Yes. I... (laughs) I know you're a good friend maker. You are. Marley sat in on our first service and just stole the show because she had a good story about kindness. Do you want to share that with everybody here again? Do you remember what you told me about Vacation Bible School? Yeah? yeah? Do you want to tell everybody about how you... I'll let you, you do it. You know oh, I can't. I get that one. Hold on. Okay. Tell them how you made a friend. Well, I have a friend, and she's at Vacation Bible School with me. And did you guys do, like, all of the activities and stuff together? You stayed pretty tight, didn't you? Yep. Yep. And we figured out who it was. It's Lily, right? Yes, Yes, Lily um, and her were just joined at the hip. And you didn't know Lily before Vacation Bible School, right? Yeah. No? You didn't know her? No. No? And you had a good time, right? So you guys were new friends, and that was something (laughs) kind that you did for each other. You became friends, right? We something kind to do. Yep. Yep. And um, as you get ready to start to school, as you do kind things for other people, that has a domino effect. Have you ever seen dominoes before? You have? Oh, my goodness. Have you guys seen dominoes before? Um, I know I didn't set them up right. That's okay. Okay. My resident kid up here has um, some dominoes here. So as you do um, something kind for someone, then they do something kind for someone else, and it just continues like a big cycle, like on dominoes. So if you knock one one of those dominoes over, can you see those down there, guys? Okay, here he goes. Ready? Watch what happens. (gasps) It's the domino effect. Did you see that? They all fell over. So if you're kind to this young lady sitting next to you, she will be kind, and it just keeps going back and forth, right? The domino effect. It could go forever, right? And that's a good thing. I think being kind is a good thing. I know I talk to you guys, yeah, I know I talk to you guys a lot about being kind, but I think it's really important because it kind of makes the world go around, right? It goes around the world. That is right. All right, let's do an echo prayer, and then we'll get you downstairs for Sunday school. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, Marley is going to pray for us. Are you ready? Okay, here you go. I'm going to do the same thing last time. Absolutely. We're going to, we're going to, you're going to say something and then we're all going to repeat after you. Okay? Go ahead. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for for this day. day. And thank you for all our food and thank you for our people. Thank you for all our food, and thank you for our people. And our water, and our everyone is probably so we can live. And water, and everything else so we can live. Okay. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Very good. All right, let's head downstairs if you want to come downstairs It's getting to be a pretty good prayer, Carrie. I I really think we should just let her have the service. What do you think, gang? Yeah. She did the same thing last time. All right, will you join me in the prayer for illumination that will be on the screen shortly? There we go. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. And our next song this morning is 10,000 Reasons. You want him to sit or you want him to stand? Stand up. Stand up. I need help. The band says stand up. He needs help. All right. Thanks, Rusty. Time to sing. 
May be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from Colossians 3, 12 through 17. And what I will read and what will be on your screen is the Common English Bible. So Colossians 3, 12 through 17 tells us this. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with, with each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called in one body. And be thankful, people. The word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and warn each other with all wisdom by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. So I ask you this morning, my question to you, 
is why do you come to church? Now you can popcorn answers or it can be a rhetorical question, but think about why you come to church. Now I know the Sunday school answer, right? You're probably thinking, uh, she's expecting some answer like, you know, to grow in my faith or be closer to God. But is that really why you come to church? I mean, if we're being honest, we kind of come to socialize, right? Or if you want a more churchy word, we come for fellowship. But basically, we come out to hang out with the people we know and that we love and who think like us, or if they don't think exactly like us, they at least respect our viewpoints and love us anyway, thank goodness. This week, as we're continuing our Wesleyan Worldview series, we're discussing another one of those United Methodist terms that sounds much fancier, maybe more complicated, maybe even a little more boring than what it actually is. We're discussing social holiness. When I told my mom we were, I was preaching on social holiness, she said, yuck. <laughs> I said, well, I don't think it's as boring as it sounds, mom, but I understand where you're coming from because it doesn't sound like a real fun topic, right? Let's be real. So social holiness in simple terms just means that we were made for community. It means it's hard to be a Christian by ourselves. John Wesley actually said, Christianity is essentially a social religion, and that to turn it into a solitary religion is indeed to destroy it. A social religion and to turn it into a solitary religion is to destroy it. And I think more than ever this past year or two, we may have understood this concept better than ever before. As we journeyed this past year, we had feelings of frustration and anger that we couldn't come to church in person, right? Even disappointment and sadness. Our church leadership wrestled with how to keep us spiritually healthy while not wanting to do any harm to us physically. Yet, in so yet solitary religion doesn't feel a whole lot like religion sometimes, does it? As wonderful and Zoom as, and FaceTime have been during this pandemic time, it's not the same as being together in person, is it? And over the past several months, we watched the statistics and learned, not surprisingly, that mental health has gotten worse than ever before, as people have had to isolate themselves in order to stay physically healthy while their mental health suffered more than ever. Even before the pandemic, 19% of adults experienced a mental illness. That's one out of five, y'all. Look around, that's a lot. And nearly 10% of our youth had severe major depression. We were made for community. And without community, our souls just aren't quite the same, are they? It's hard to be Christians by ourselves because our self-talk isn't always the greatest, am I right? I mean, it's hard to remember God's continual grace when we are by ourselves. We need others to remind us that God continually loves us and constantly loves us no matter where we are in life, no matter what we've done, God is there unconditionally. And in turn, we get to share that love and that grace with others, and that's what makes us good Christians, right? John Wesley said, whatever grace you have received of God may through you be communicated to others. Now that's John Wesley speak, so let me try it one more time. Are you ready? Whatever grace you have received of God may through you be communicated to others. Or as to simplify it with Carrie's children's sermon, pass it on. That's what those little coins said. Take kindness and pass it on. Much simpler. Even our United Methodist Social Creed states, the personal experience of faith is nourished by the worshiping community. We need each other. We need each other to learn and to grow, to be our best Christian selves, because we're not real great at doing it on our own, are we? You may have heard our leadership talk about and mention small groups, and you'll probably continue to hear us talk about and mention small groups, because we know how important they are to our Christian faith. We know how important they are to living our most authentic Christian lives, so in the next few weeks and months, you'll see a lot of opportunities in our church to join small groups. We'll be encouraging you to join those because we care about your soul and we want you to grow deeper in Christ and deeper as a Christian in your relationship with God. And yet social holiness is not only about 
not being a Christian by ourselves, it's also about using our voice as Christians to help others. It's about coming together with a louder voice to help those and advocate those who can't necessarily do it on their own. The Reverend Susan Henry Crow from the United Methodist Board of Church and Society says this, social holiness is unique to United Methodism. United Methodists have a long commitment to social holiness. It is in our DNA. It is a part of who we are. She goes on to say, we live our lives together and we live our lives with all of God's creation. We walk with one another. We walk with those who are poor, those who are vulnerable, those who live on the margins of life. These words seem especially true of us at Broadway. We have our Phillips Cupboard ministry that helps with non-food pantry items such as soap and shampoo and diapers for families who need them. We have volunteers that help at Care and Share that provide clothes for families who need them and can't access them other ways. We adopt Longfellow Elementary each school year, and we provide the students and staff with school supplies, with gloves and hats and mittens and underwear and socks for the kids, and we provide food on special days for the teachers, and we surround them in prayer all year long. Our church has a constant concern for our environment as we worry about and are always trying to do more with recycling, with composting, with reusing our cups and plates, and not just using styrofoam. We are always installing more efficient lighting to be better stewards of our church. And these are only a few of the ministries that I mentioned that we do here at Broadway. As we provide outreach in the community, we walk hand in hand with those in our neighborhood and our little piece of the world. And through all of this, it's important to keep in mind, just as John Wesley found out long ago, that sometimes all of this ministry, all of the stuff and all of the things can be kind of messy. Sometimes we open our doors to people who mess up our church, right? They do things differently than we would, and they certainly don't do them as we've always done them. We open up our church doors and people put holes in our church walls. Or they may not wear a mask like we ask them to. They might smell funny or not have great manners. Sometimes the mess might look a little different. It might be us getting hurt or sharing in hurt with others. In my life the past couple weeks, that's looked like me praying with a friend outdoors, socially distanced, 10 feet away, because she and her family are struggling with being in quarantine and continually trying to keep herself and her kids healthy while her husband is in quarantine separated for them for a couple of weeks. It looked like me meeting with an individual across the metro area to listen to his story of bad decisions that led to years of imprisonment, and now that he's free, how he's trying to turn his life around. It's showing up. Maybe it's a kind word to a cash cashier at a restaurant or a store, who just looks like they have had a rough day and need a kind word. It's showing up and being who God needs us to be, often when we least expect it. Because if we're to be the church that God calls us to be, not just inside our walls, but outside our walls also, we must remain a place where Christians are formed, where we become the hands and feet of Christ. Because you see, we become most fully human and most fully Christian when we share in the relationships God initiates with us through the people that he puts in our way. And some days it feels just like that, doesn't it? We don't necessarily have time. This person has been put in our way and we have other things to do. But that's when we can be most Christian and most human, when we help those people. So I ask you today, church, who is God putting in your way? Where is God tugging at your heartstrings to reach out and help others? What are you hearing God say to you? John Wesley said, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, 
as long as you ever can. That's a tall order for us, isn't it? We know that we need each other. We need community to strengthen our souls. And it is through this community that gives us the strength and the love and the grace that we need and that we must have to continually work together and continually be the church that God calls us to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, you'll notice the offering box here as you leave, and there's also information on your screen about other ways to give. We just ask you utilize those ways in whatever is most convenient for you. And as we sing this next song, nope, you guys sing a song during the offering? Nope, we just go right into a prayer. All right, sorry. It's a little different than first service. I'm still learning. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> But as we, as we go into a prayer about our offering, let's reflect on ways that God is calling us to be the church and who God is putting in our way. God, we thank you for the many things you've given us today. We thank you for freely giving us many things that you've given us. Help us also, God, to freely receive, to use the gifts that you've given us to do your will and not our own, God to better your kingdom. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And now we move into a time with prayers of the people. Um, this is a time for you to say things out loud or in your hearts for those things that are on your hearts and minds, the joys, the concerns, whatever you would share. You're welcome to say those out loud if you're so comfortable. If you're uh, visiting online with us, you can type those in your screen. That's okay too. Or you can just... Keep them in your heart because God knows. As I pray, we'll talk about the different categories. The response will be, Lord, in your mercy, and you join in with hear our prayer, which will also be on the screen. Will you pray with me, please? Together, let us pray for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who suffer and those in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The concerns of the communities we call home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The world, its people, and its leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Church Universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer the communion of saints who have gone before us and show us the way. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now as we join together, let's join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please stand now for our next song, Give Me Jesus. Beloved, go this morning, remembering that things get messy, right? But in the mess, go be the church. 
Go be the hands and feet of Jesus. Go in peace. Amen.